The concentric zone model is a theory used in urban geography to explain how cities grow and organise themselves. It shows a city as a series of rings that spread out from the centre. Each ring has a different purpose or type of land use. The centre is called the central business district, where most businesses and shops are located. As you move outward, the rings usually show older housing, newer housing and eventually suburbs. This model suggests that people and activities spread out in a predictable way as the city grows. The concentric zone model was created in the early 20th century as a way to understand patterns of urban development. It was based on studies of cities that were growing quickly during that time. The idea came from observing how people tended to settle in different areas depending on their income, jobs and lifestyle. The model helped explain why certain neighbourhoods were located close to the city centre while others were further away. It was one of the first major attempts to explain how modern cities are organised and has been used as a foundation for later models in urban studies. Now let's look at some examples. In many large cities, the downtown area is full of offices, government buildings and stores. This is the central business district, or the inner ring. Just outside of that might be older neighbourhoods with smaller houses or apartment buildings, often where lower-income families live. Moving further out, there are usually areas with single-family homes, parks and schools, which are more common for middle-class families. On the very edge of the city, you might find suburbs with newer houses and people who commute to the centre for work. These patterns follow the idea of rings spreading out from the core. Now let's look at some strengths of the concentric zone model. One strength is that it gives a simple way to understand how cities grow and change over time. It shows a clear pattern that can help city planners make decisions about housing, transportation and services. Another benefit is that it can be used to compare different cities, since many of them follow similar growth patterns. The model is also helpful for teaching students about urban areas in an easy-to-understand way. Its ring-shaped layout makes it a useful starting point for studying how people live and move in cities. However, the concentric zone model is not without its criticisms. One weakness is that it assumes all cities grow in a neat, circular pattern. But in real life, cities often grow in uneven or unpredictable ways because of natural features like rivers or mountains. Another weakness is that it doesn't explain how modern transportation, like cars and highways, can affect where people live and work. The model also doesn't account for mixed-use neighbourhoods where people live, work and shop in the same area. These weaknesses show that while the model is helpful, it doesn't fully match today's complex cities. An alternative to the concentric zone model is the sector model. Instead of rings, this model shows a city as growing in wedges or slices that extend out from the centre, usually along major roads or rail lines. In this model, different types of neighbourhoods grow outward in sections, with some areas developing as industrial zones, others as rich neighbourhoods and so on. Another alternative is the multiple nuclei model, which says that a city can have more than one centre, like different districts for business, shopping or housing. These models help explain the variety of shapes and patterns seen in real cities.